So we're at a flea market. It's Saturday. They're only open Saturday and Sundays and only for a few hours. And there's some dealers that are never, ever there except on a Sunday and some that are only there once a month and the whole works. Now, this is one I've been to for, uh, I don't know, six times before maybe, but two or three years ago before the pandemic, we've moved. So now there's obviously a whole new area that we look through. This is close to our house, so I do take a look here. Um, at the end of the day, though, I only got a few bags of stuff, but it's okay stuff. I should make some good money off the stuff as well, and we're going to go take a look at it right now. So I'm back from the, I guess, flea market slash junk store. Only open on the weekends. I never have much luck in there. Now a lot of the stuff in there too is way overpriced. Now I got some postcards and they had them in, I can hold on to them, these Ziplocs. And to get them in there, you almost have to bend the card to get them in there. It's very obvious they weren't uh, postcard dealers. They had $4.50 on every single postcard, hundreds of them, but they were all $4.50, no matter what was on them. And a bunch of them were maybe worth a quarter if you were lucky. Now, they're mostly local cards, so that was a big plus because I've handled thousands upon thousands of decent local cards. So I know the area pretty well. I know what pretty much does or doesn't exist in some of these areas, and these are from Fremont. It's a place I go to. There's a big, huge... Uh, flea market antique flea market out there a few times a year and I end up going there sometimes especially in the winter because it's It's all in one building. You don't have to walk like on some of the other ones, but Anyway, I did buy four postcards for four dollars from Fremont. They're all very very early This one uh, shows the Wonderland moving picture Five cent theater on it and this dates to about 1907. It's got a real nice sign. I don't know how well it's going to show up, but that one might get me about 125. Bottom end, I wouldn't sell it for less than 57.50. So I wouldn't have bought these. Normally I pay a dollar a card and that's about it. You know, real picture, real photo postcards are a little different. Now here is the Joseph Ziegler Hotel in Fremont as well. I can't quite make out the other building next to it, but this is probably a $40 or $50 postcard. Here's a train wreck where a train slammed into a railroad bridge and it's totally totaled on this end of it. Again, Fremont, it's on the river out there. Um, and then this is Jay Mayer, uh, his delivery wagon or their company delivery wagon. And for what it looks like, that's a grocery department store in Fremont or was. So this is an occupational transportation. This is another one of those, probably 40 or $50 or better. Again, $4 a piece, which I thought, you know, wow, I'm not gonna find anything in here that I'm going to be willing to spend four bucks on. There were probably 20 or 30 other ones I would have, you know, shelled out a dollar a piece for. I asked, no, if you buy more than so many, I think it was three, they were $4 a piece, which I got these for. So basically it was $16 for four postcards. Now I've shelled out hundreds of dollars for some postcards and these are definitely worth $4. So, I mean, I'm not upset that they were four bucks. It's just surprise, sticker shock, I guess, being so used to uh, paying almost nothing for them. Helen and Billy Scott. Now this is a local record, it's from Cincinnati. I've seen probably five or six of these in the last two or three years around here through my travels. Uh, a mint condition one will get you about 10 bucks. I'm talking mint. A sealed one about 15, but this one's even better. The record is mint, the, the cover isn't super good, but they both signed it. Now this is more like, I would call this almost a rockabilly Zion country gospel with a mix of blues. Nothing spectacular, you know, it's nothing super, super great, but for a dollar, you know, the sealed one's 25, this is worth more than that. I should get 35 to 45 bucks, uh, maybe even up to 57, 50. I may list it for 75 and just hold my guns because this is a chance label, it's called. The name of the label is Chance and uh, this one here, if I can get it out very nicely. It's a nicely marked Cincinnati label. It, it's literally in mint condition. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have even messed with it other than the autographs on it. But that's the thing I've talked about for years. I've bought 
hundreds, maybe even close to a thousand autographed items in the many years, several decades we've been doing this. I've probably got, I don't know, maybe 125, including uh, a president's son, a general's, um, every uh, known movie actor. I've got a couple of Elvis's autographs that I've gotten here and there. So they turn up. So that's something I always look for. Now normally this, this vendor doesn't have much good things in their, their booth, even a dollar a record, it just it wasn't worth a bunch. I looked, there was some I actually looked up, some, um, some um, classical. And they were uh, living stereo and stuff, but they were all the more common ones. Someone's probably picked through them. Now there's also someone in there that has a bunch of books for basically a dollar a piece. And this one was a dollar as you see it, but what, after I got home, and I didn't even look at it when I got it, I'm like a dollar, I'm gonna buy a Snap-on catalog from 66 any day of the week, 67, I'm sorry. I've got the 66 price catalog that came with it as well, and the 65, 64 one, or 65, 66, excuse me. So these are all decent items. Just the catalog alone goes for 20 to 25. Two years of price list, probably about 30, 34. And this is probably my favorite piece out of there, Snap-on Railroad Equipment. I never knew they made railroad equipment, so I haven't even looked this one up, but you know, I'm, chances are I might be able to sell it before it even hits eBay. I know some folks because of my um, transportation areas that we sell in, especially like uniform buttons and stuff. I sell tons of railroad stuff. Today I think we shipped out like $135 just in buttons for railroad lines. Um, so I probably know somebody, if not, this will just go up on eBay, but I've never seen a Snap-on tool thing that was made for the transportation railroad industry. Again, dollar for all of those Snap-on items. And this was a dollar, a give me any day of the week. It's uh, goggles of various types, welding and such forth, and these are just like steampunkish almost. For a dollar, I'm sure I can get some money out of this. I couldn't find much on it at all, but it's pages like this right here that'll make it or break it. I, you know, I'm a big glasses person. I wear contacts or glasses. My vision's fairly bad these days with some issues and, and stuff. I've got vertical diplopia in one of my eyes, so I've got like double vision. I've collected glasses because of my eye issues for years in years and years. I've got them back to the Revolutionary War and to me this stuff is really cool and I know a lot of other people that buy them. Anything that's Bosch and Lam, I usually sell quickly. Anything eyeglass, Google or goggles uh, related pretty much goes out the door. So there isn't anything from this company that I could find on eBay. I'm probably going to put it up for 75 bucks. I don't think I would get less than 25 for it. And continuing on here, this is a J.H. Williams tool catalog. Uh, Year-wise, I don't know if I ever determined a year, but I'm guessing 1950s. Uh, and this is a main big thick year, 1963, so yeah, it's close to the 50s. There's a couple of inserts in here as well, just like most of the time, which is basically like uh, the price catalog for it. So you've got prices and the actual catalog. As many times the prices were different or if they were sending it to a business, the price sheets might have each prices as well as per dozen, not baker's dozen, unfortunately, with tools back in those days. But that's what I look for. Having the price sheets with them is far better than just having the catalog. So 25 to say 57, 50, you know, on, on value-wise. I do excellent on all these eyeball, uh, tool, you know, construction, those types of catalogs. I've sold almost every one we've ever had and for decent money. So I always grab them up, especially at a dollar. Now, I'll show you the best one last. Now this one was just uh, random, I wasn't sure. It's fairly new and it's kind of in a junky looking binder, which I can probably wash up. Pulleys, it's nautical related. So this will be pushed as a nautical item on this just because of these. Um, it's got everything, order sheets and everything in the back. This is the, the main one for the actual blocks. They have some for anvils and a bunch of other things. This company's been around a little while. I've seen other items buy them. I'm guessing 10 or 15 bucks, maybe up to 20, 25 if I clean it up and get some good keywords and push the nautical aspect of it. You know, this is what would be used on a, on, you know, an old sailing ship or something. So excellent looking item. It can be cleaned up. It's not so bad, but uh, anyway, all together, you know, there's hundreds of dollars at that junk store. And I spent, let's see, $16, 17, 
um, like 22 or 23 bucks total for everything. Now this is the best piece out of there. It's from the 20s or 30s. It's a jewelry book. Well, it's not just a jewelry book. I paid a dollar as a regular book. This is actually a catalog for 1920s, um, I would have to guess. I haven't found a, a physical date, but it's Art Deco Jewelry. It's 14 karat, 10 karat. I've run into pieces by this company. They show up, its logo is right there. So if you ever see that logo on any jewelry, especially men's jewelry, this is the company name for that logo. You'll see, I've got a piece right now in inventory I just picked up like two weeks ago, right before I even got this. So, but it has, let me, it's got watch chains, ladies' uh, fancy bracelets. They're 14 karat, 10 karats. So these are high-end stuff, 1920s. The pages are extremely thick. There's order and price sheets on every single page. Mounted separately so they could pull these out and put new prices in without anybody ever knowing they did that. It has real diamond jewelry. I mean, this is a higher-end catalog. Art Deco clips, money clips, and belts, and buckles, and things. Um, again, a lot of these are sterling silver. Some of these pieces I've run into, but I had no idea on who made them because sometimes they're not all marked. So this is almost like a guide for many, many years. They probably had the same designs for just a year. So a few pages are out. I will be able to fix that up because it's a spiral. I'll be able to refix it up. Oh, that's kind of weird. Again, cufflinks from the 20s. You can easily tell by the designs. Watch chains, more chains of various types. Now, a lot of these are 1 20th, 12 karat, 1 uh, 10th, 10 karat, 1 10th, 14 karat. Sterling gold filled pocket knives. Again, all the prices are on there, and they're not cheap prices for the time frame. So this one's probably the best one I've gotten in catalogs in a very long time. The last one of these sorts of jewelry, not by this company, it was one from the same time from 1920, so we got 280 some odd bucks for it. Now, I don't know for sure what this one's going to be worth, but I'm probably going to put it up for hundreds, probably maybe 375 as a deco men's watch chain, cufflinks, gold, silver, you know, just cram the title, bunch of keywords down inside there, get some attention, and catalog, original catalog bound. And I can fix that. It is the type of binder almost that you can pop open and then re-place uh, them back where they need to be. This one I was just like ecstatic when I saw it. This is one of those good finds that even if it's not worth a fortune, this is probably one of the coolest things I've seen because it shows stuff from like a hundred years ago that you could buy with the prices. And again, they're not cheap. Some of the prices in here might be what I would have to pay at a secondhand store, a reselling piece, of maybe a $6 sterling silver bracelet, and then maybe resell it for 15 to 20. I mean, that's the, the gist on you know pricing. So it's not that far off from what silver is going for, what silver is right now. Excellent piece. I mean, other than a few pages being out, and, and I think there's two pages that have some little bit of roughness on the edge just because of that. But once they're all lined up, it should be a, a very fine piece. So there's actually hundreds of dollars in that junk store. I spent about maybe 40 minutes in the store. It's probably got about 30 vendors, maybe, maybe a few more than that, but I don't think so. You have to pay at each individual booth if you can find the person who's there. Um, I spent some time in the books because, you know, it was one of the bigger sections and everything was a dollar. So, you know, the postcards I found on the way out. I did try to record. I was going to have my camera on. I filmed it in the parking lot and all, but I was asked to turn it off immediately coming into the store. So, Anyway, I'm not going to get into it with the store. I'll probably go back to it at some point. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified whenever I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell all your friends.
What would you trade for a new 71 Super Fast? What would you trade for the supercharged Rat Rod? What would you trade for this fabulous Formula One? If you've got a used car, trade it in now and get a great deal on these Super Fast Racers. They won't take your old wheels and trade for a Super Fast. Yes, they will. No, they won't. Yes, we will take your old wheels. Trade in any used or broken car and cut the price to 59 cents for a 71 Super Fast. Super Fast by Matchbox.